Hey everybody, got a couple mystery packages here, so I figured I'd open them up and we'll see what they are. I have a feeling I know what this one is. Let's see. So this one, uh, I'm gonna open it up off screen. I uh, opened up some tantalum capacitors in a previous video and they sent me 10 of the ones that uh, I had ordered instead of 20. And it looks like they came back here and sent me 20 more to make up for that. So I appreciate that. I'll try to remember to add the YouTube seller to the uh, video because anybody who would not only make it right, but make it right plus some is okay in my book. Next one, I have absolutely no idea what it is. Um, Feels like some oh cool okay so these are going to be related here um i'm just going to go ahead and open up this one as well uh these are in case you can't tell little fans and i think they're a couple different sizes no you know what it was um if you order much off aliexpress you'll notice that they um bump up the shipping when it hits a certain threshold and uh no these are slightly different actually um and so a lot of times I wind up ordering things in smaller quantities than I actually need just to uh, save on shipping. And so as you can see here, I have, uh, these are, I don't know what size that is. Would that be 30 millimeter? I don't know, but uh, yeah, it looks like maybe three centimeters, so probably 30 millimeter fans. And I've got them in the PWM three wire style and two wire style. And that's because a lot of the old 486s and stuff that I have are, um, the, these little fans die just relatively easily and so I got these things cheap um, these are little fans and I'll hook some up and kind of test but the idea is like to go out there and find a 486 heat sink and fan can be fairly expensive but to replace one uh, this is probably like a buck or two all right it's a different day but I didn't feel like I gave you guys enough stuff in the last mailbag so uh, I'm going to go ahead and extend this one um, this is one of those pens. I just saw Simple Electronics get one. He ordered it about the same time as I got mine. Uh, I'm going to twist it. This is a fiberglass pen that jewelers use. Uh, let's see what it says here. Fiberglass pen, scratch, brush, uh, single scratch pen. And uh, normally I would buy something like this in a three pack and they sell little um, refills for this, but this is fiberglass here and it is used for um, cleaning jewelry. But in my purposes, I want to use it for getting um, things like battery uh, stains and, and acid off of motherboards and things like that. So you can't always save them, especially those multi-layer PCBs, but if I can uh, clean things up a little more delicately with something like this, then, um, you know, I'm gonna do it. So I'll give you guys a review of this later and let you know how well I think they work or you might just see it being used in a video. Next up, I think I know what this is. This may be going back, let me see. Um, this came way too late. Uh, yeah, these are, um, these are my go-to micro SD cards for Raspberry Pis. I feel like 16 gigs is pretty much the sweet spot for most Raspberry Pi things. If I'm gonna do something like a, uh, um, like one of those gaming systems, like a Retro Pi, I'll use a 256. But for the most part, it's not really worth buying cards less than 16 gigs. Uh, and you know, so in general, this is kind of my go-to and SanDisk Ultras are pretty good. And I found them to be really reliable. In fact, I don't think I've ever actually killed one of these things. Um, I also use them a lot in retro PCs where I use one of those little SD card readers to act like a hard drive. Um, these were for a job. And so uh, I wound up having to front the ones out of my own pocket. So these are kind of replacements uh, for those. So SD cards, nothing too exciting. Uh, but I think this is exciting, so I'm going to open this up. This is the reason why I'm doing a mailbag at 7 o'clock at night, um, because I want this bad boy. Um, this is, I'll make you wait for it till I see it. This is something that anybody who deals with retro computing will appreciate, especially if you deal with the older stuff like uh, 8088 type stuff. This, oh, it's beautiful. This is a, a XT IDE. And so uh, the deal is most IDE cards are 16 uh, bits. And um, this, wow, that is beautiful. 
Um, this is by Blue Lava Systems. I think they deserve a shout out for um, for this piece of kit here. Um, silk screened all the jumper settings and all the information on the back. But the idea is that you can plug this in a single 8-bit slot on your legacy computers and you get both a compact flash and an IDE. And so you can either do two IDE drives or um, you know one IDE, one compact flash. And so this is very, very cool because um, the older computers are kind of a pain to get working and stuff like that. So my thought is uh, this one came with a 256 megabyte, which is plenty good, a 256 meg compact flash card. For those of you that don't know, um, the compact flash um, standard is very similar, if not completely based on the IDE standard. So uh, computers can read compact flash generally more natively, I guess is probably the non-technical way to say it. Um, so in these older systems, there's a lot less overhead, a lot better compatibility with um, compact flash cards, especially the older compact flash cards. And uh, so if you think about it, a lot of these old computers have only 360K drives, which are difficult to um, get working, or they have hard cards, which I'm going to do a whole video on hard cards, and those things are notoriously trash, or they have MFM RLL drives in these old hard drive formats that are just difficult to, to get started. So with this, you can put this in a slot and boot up and have basically all the software you need to run diagnostics and stuff like that and uh, and not need to worry about any of those old legacy things until you get all your diagnostic stuff done. Then if you want to fix the floppy drive, if you want to diagnose the hard drive or even pull the hard card apart, you can. But this thing is a game changer for working on old computers. And they do make a version of this that doesn't have this compact flash on the back. And what I've seen, I've seen multiple people, including Adrian from Adrian's Digital Basement, uh, put them in backwards uh, because it's real easy to put one in backwards. And so I wanted the one that had the bracket so that it would be basically impossible to plug in backwards. So uh, I know how opposite minded I am. So I didn't want to do that. So there we go. Um, that thing is about 50, 60 bucks. So it's not cheap, but compared to the time it saves, it is awesome. Now this, I genuinely have no idea what it is. Um, this is, let's see, there's a bunch of them. Ah, okay. So this is, uh, I may not have even released my mailbag yet where I worked on an old um, magnifying lamp, or I guess not too old, but uh, I realized that I only had one of these negative, uh, the female um, barrel jack connectors. And so the barrel jack, and then you can just put wires right on here. So they're real handy to, um, to just, if you have to cut a power plug that doesn't mate up with what you want. Um, most of the time you'd use the positive version of this, but occasionally I'll want to do some testing and I'll want the negative version. So I got the, uh, the female side of these connectors and I got 10 of them for a couple of bucks. So that's it. We've got all the things that I opened up earlier and these last four bonus items, three bonus items that I got here. So all the links will be in the description and I really appreciate you guys watching and have a great day.